Pastors Andrew and Gabby Wilkes. The church is called the Double Love Experience Church. Today is the launch of their church. Like, we're a part of this, y'all. Are you listening? Those of you who are listening, we're a part of history. We envision, we envision. a Jesus movement committed to black lives. Welcome to DLE Fellows Sunday. Our fellow Brittany Pascal has an amazing word in store for you, but before she gets into it and we start our service, I need you to do one thing for us. Go ahead and share the stream because you want to make sure your friends and your family get a chance to fellowship with you. So do them that favor and let's get into this service because it'll be an amazing time in the presence of God. Power in your name. Oh, so much power. 
power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in your name. Yes, a big change. Things change when we call you Jesus. Things change when we call your name. Things change. When I call on the name of the Lord
Hallelujah, Jesus. This is still worship, though, so I don't think you're going to stop worshiping. You're just going to say different words. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to do it call and response style. And what that means is I'll say something, you repeat it, so on and so forth. So let's start with our mission. And I need a talk back, church, okay? Our mission is to create a congregation committed to the liberating, love-powered ministry of Jesus the Christ. We commit to advancing the love and justice of God through dynamic worship, popular education, community organizing, and radical discipleship. And some of that discipleship was on display in worship. Let me tell you, we were acting up, okay? Because we love to call the name of God. Let's go on ahead to our vision. Repeat after me. We envision a Jesus movement committed to black lives, an equitable economy for all God's creation, and a spirit-led mysticism. The prophet Micah's enduring words function as our centering image. We are an assembly of believers striving to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Hallelujah. And these times are times for us to put that to the do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with the Lord our God. So I am excited to announce to you that next week, somebody say next week. And that means put it in the comments. Go ahead and say next week. It's our DLE outside, y'all. We coming back outside. Woo! And I'm so excited to see every one of you there. So make sure that you pencil it into your calendars that you're going to meet us there. And with that being said, it is my honor to welcome up our pastors. And let me, <clears throat> hold on. The amazing, incredible, anointed, intelligent, woo, excellent men and women of God. <laughs> pastors Gabby Cudjo Wilkes and Pastor Andrew Wilkes. Welcome, welcome, Hallelujah. welcome. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Did she do good? She did good, y'all. She done real good. Amen, amen, amen. Well, y'all, it's fellow Sunday, which means we're not going to be up here long. We just want to take a quick moment in the comments. Can you really quickly just love on all our fellows, current, past, and present? Just, just type for me in the comments. We love you, fellows. We love you, fellows. They are phenomenal. Um, and so real quick, we want to actually just give something really quickly uh, to our current fellow. Brittany Pascal, come up. Come up, Brittany. Uh, we want to give you something. Um, she has been phenomenal. This is part one, y'all. We have two fellows. Somebody say increase. We got double fellows this year. We got double fellows. We got her in all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. And we want to present you with uh, the Double Love Experience Hall King Award. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Andrew to read this award. It's an award we started um, when our first fellow went through the program, and it feels like it honors the legacy that comes before us. We want to make sure that you have that. Absolutely, and I'll read it uh, so those of you who are worshiping with us virtually uh, can participate in this moment. Uh, this award is given in the spirit of the legacy of Reverend Dr. Prathia Hall and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in celebration of your dedication and commitment to the Double Love Experience Church. We celebrate your ministerial service, advocacy, commitment to justice, and deep love for God's people. And we grant you this award in the final month of your Double Love Experience Ministerial Fellowship on the occasion of your sermonic proclamation. That means she about to preach the house down, y'all. May you continue to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. This is for you from us. Amen. Give her some love, y'all. Give her some love, y'all. Also, um, we had the honor of doing dinner with our fellows uh, the night before they preached. And at that dinner, our inaugural fellow blessed all of us with these beautiful shirts. Y'all see these shirts right here? 
Um, so I feel special because my name is on it. You know something is yours when your name is on it. So, so Pastor Andrew, can you model the back of the shirt? So, so we are clergy committed to the liberating, love-powered ministry of Jesus the Christ. Make some noise. Amen, somebody. And so uh, Luke made sure that both uh, Brittany has a shirt with her name on it. So it says Brittany right there. And we made sure that Trelawney has one as well. So thank God for the new traditions, the new legacies, and the ministry that will come forth. It does not yet appear what Christ will do. Amen. So come on and celebrate. And we're going to leave the service back in the capable hands of Afia Sylvester. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I forgot something. Just a really brief announcement we want to make about ranked choice voting. Uh, as your pastors, we want to share a brief word about New York City's electoral primary happening this Tuesday. Uh, not this Tuesday, but on a Tuesday. We're, we're going to go up to vote on a Tuesday, uh, June 22nd. Uh, this election is the first time that ranked choice voting will happen. And we just want y'all to know two things. Somebody say just two things about ranked choice. The first is that it means you literally rank and order uh, your preferred candidates based on uh, who you want to see in the role. So in the same way that you would rank uh, your top five MCs, in the same way that you would rank your top five movies, you're going to rank your top five candidates. The second thing that we want you to know, and the final thing, is that ranked choice voting applies to the offices of mayor, of comptroller, public advocate, uh, as well as the borough president, uh, and city council candidates. This is important because uh, most of the uh, older veterans of New York's elected class are transitioning out due to term limits. So we're gonna put a whole new set of faces in office. They're gonna have a whole new set of priorities and we want to make sure that their priorities are rooted in love, rooted in justice, rooted in making sure our people have what they need, amen? So make a calendar appointment June 22nd uh, or if you feel so led, uh, we're in the early voting period now. You can vote now if you want to do it and take care of it. But if not now, make sure you do it on Tuesday, June 22nd. God bless you. Let's be a voting church together. And we'll turn it back over to our ministerial fellow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you go out and vote, people of God. So we are going to continue on in this service and in this spirit of worship. How many of you know that tithes and offering are also a form of worship? Oh, I don't hear nobody. I said tithes and offering are also a form of worship. So at DLE, you have several different ways that you can give. You can give via PayPal. You'll just go ahead and do paypal.me slash DLE give. You can also give via Cash App at DLE give and via Zelle using our email address, doubleofexperience at gmail.com. All of that is going to be at the bottom of your screen. So we welcome you to continue worshiping the Lord in your giving. And before we transition to the sermonic solo of the day, I am really excited to go ahead and introduce to you our ministerial fellow and give you a little bit of an overview of how amazing she is and who exactly she is. So ministerial fellow, Brittany Paschal. Brittany T. Paschal is an educator, a liberator, an activist, an organizer, a minister, a writer, and leader at the intersection of social justice and healing for many on the front lines of activists' work. She is a graduate of Grand Canyon University and the TTA Humanitarian Community Service Award recipient for the status of women. Presently, she is a Gen to Gen Fellow with Encore and a proud public school educator. We have the honor of hearing her minister and preach the word of God. But before she does that, we are going to welcome our worship team up with a sermonic solo. Let's continue worshiping the Lord our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt God's name together. Magnify the Lord with me. I am um, so blessed to be here all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. I want to just give honor to Pastor Gabby, Pastor Andrew, the great pastors of Double Love Experience Church. <laughs> Will you go with me to Matthew 9, verses 18 through 26? And the gospel reads, While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seen her. He said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away. For the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout the district. I want to spend a few moments speaking to you on the topic for colored girls who need a miracle. <laughs> Pray with me. Gracious God, how we thank you, how we magnify you for this, your preaching moment. Be with your people and your preacher, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Ancestors, be honored. God, be praised. Amen. And Ashe. Somebody, anybody, sing a black girl song. Bring her out to know herself, to know you, but sing her rhythms. Karen, struggle, hard times, sing her song of life. She's been dead so long, closed in silence so long, she doesn't know the sound of her own voice, her infinite beauty. She's half note scattered, without rhythm, no tune. Sing her sighs, sing the song of her possibility, sing a righteous gospel. Let her be born, let her be born and handled warmly. You see, this is an excerpt from For Colored Girls When the Rainbow is Enough. Published in 1975, Shange's first and most acclaimed work was a theater piece. It touched the ears, the minds, the hearts of people, especially black and women around the world. This choral poem for colored girls tells the stories of seven women who have suffered oppression in a racist and sexist society. The cast of these seven nameless African-American women is only identified by the colors that they are assigned. They are the lady in red, the lady in orange, the lady in yellow, the lady in green, the lady in blue, the lady in brown, and the lady in purple. Subjects that range from rape, abandonment, abortion, and domestic violence are all tackled in this piece. You see, in today's text over in Matthew, we once again meet nameless women, navigating the real circumstances of life. We meet two colored girls who need miracles. And while these women, in both instances, may be nameless, they are the women and girls in our lives, especially black. They are in our communities, our churches, and our schools. They are our mothers, our sisters our friends, and ourselves. You see, the women introduced to us by Shange and even the writer in Matthew are no anomaly. Instead, these women represent a larger and wider societal trend of women and girls in need of divine interventions, 
miracles even, often due to the oppression and marginalization from society. Late last month, the former Fresh Prince of Bel-Air actress, Tatiana Ali, penned the following words concerning her experience giving birth. I knew instinctively that they would hurt my baby. She joins hundreds of and thousands of black women fighting for their literal lives during childbirth as our nation deals with a black maternal crisis. Black women are three to four times more likely to experience a pregnancy-related death than white women. And unfortunately, literal death is not the only threat to the lives and the livelihoods of black women and girls, colored girls. Black women and girls also deal with ongoing discrimination, exclusion, violence, and trauma. Black girls are 5.5 times more likely to be suspended from school. Just last, in the last few weeks, social media went up in flames over guess what? If black women could wear bonnets in public. And you see that my timeline lit up with several different posts of misogynistic, anti-black, language concerning such a sacred part of the black woman's experience, deeply personal part of the experience, hair. And even more recently, the Southern Baptist Convention, no surprise here, has leaders that are calling full grown black women employees, girls. Who is checking for the colored girls? Cause a whole lot of colored girls need miracles. Shanjay put it this way when speaking to the complex realities and nuances of the lives of colored girls. But sang her rhythms, Karen, struggle, hard times. Sang her song of life. She's been dead so long, closed in silence so long. She doesn't know the sound of her own voice. So now, to the sisters in today's text, we first meet an unnamed woman who is Jarius's daughter. She has died a physical death. The other, most commonly known as the woman with the issue of blood, is still alive physically, but has died many times over, over the course of 12 years of bleeding. Because she has been bleeding, she has been outcast from the larger community. We may perhaps call this a social death. The word social death, or the term social de death rather, was first coined in 1985 by a sociologist by the name of Orlando Patterson in his text, Slavery and Social Death. The phrase social death refers to the condition of people not accepted as fully human by the wider society. Sound familiar? Like the women in today's text, many color girls stand waiting for their miracle, be it spiritual, social, emotional, or otherwise. See, you may be the lady in blue who needs to overcome physical pain, shame, and isolation. You might be a colored girl who needs a miracle. Or maybe you are the lady in red, struggling to find your voice amidst a world that threatens your agency. Maybe you're the lady in orange trying to live fully and embrace love, but instead getting abuse and toxicity, experiencing doubts about who you are and your racial identity, your self-worth. Or maybe you are the lady in green walking around saying, somebody almost walked away with all of my stuff. <laughs> you might be a colored girl who needs a miracle. Regardless of if you are the lady in blue, the lady in red, the lady in orange, or the lady in green trying to get your stuff back, I came here today for the colored girls who need a miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're musical, you might like the Clark sisters. They put it this way. They said, I'm looking for a miracle. First person, I'm. I'm looking for a miracle to happen to me. They said, I expect the impossible. I'm expecting something good to come. I'm anticipating it. I feel the intangible. I may not be able to touch it, but I feel it in my spirit. I see the invisible. You got to see to be able to hope. I'm looking for a miracle. Are there any colored girls who are here looking for a miracle? There are three miracles for colored girls that I want to bring to our attention from this text in Matthew. The first the miracle of showing up in faith. You see, Jairus, who was a well-known leader at the synagogue, showed up for his daughter. 
See, he did not let his importance or his pride keep him from going to Jesus. And he didn't just show up, which took faith, right? He showed up. I'm looking for a miracle, like the Clark sisters said. But he showed up and he petitioned with clarity for what his daughter needed. It says that while Jesus was teaching, that's what verse 18 alludes to, Jesus was teaching, and while that's going on, Jared says, my daughter, in verse 18, has just died, but if you come and you lay your hand on her, she will live. We need people in our lives who will show up with faith and who will petition with clarity for the things that black women and girls need. This is for black men. This is for other allies. This is for, this is for the larger community. We need to show up and continue to show up for each other. And y'all may not like this, but this is for me. We need to allow ourselves to be shown up for. To ask for what we need. That brings me to my next point about showing up in faith. The woman with the issue of blood, just a little later in the text, she shows up for herself. She practices a womanist ethic called radical subjectivity. According to Floyd Thomas, radical subjectivity is described as the bonds of learning and growing from mature to immature beings as a way to actualize one's agency and a subjective view of the world, self for black women. Here's the important part. Rather than see themselves as victims of circumstance, it gives the black woman a sense of identity that goes beyond the racist, sexist, and classist categories that they are often unwillingly ascribed to. See, this is radical subjectivity that says, they've been saying, sis, you can't come here. You can't do this. You're bleeding, so you're not welcome here. And sis had to say, they said, but I say, I will go and touch Jesus. I will touch his garment and I will be healed. Radical subjectivity. The boldness that she practiced to touch Jesus. And see, we got to understand that Jesus isn't just anybody. Can you imagine everybody telling you you can't touch anybody and then you go touch, you go touch Jesus who is above everybody else. See, we need this same boldness, especially in a world in which our selfhood, our subjectivity, and our beings are constantly threatened. And even in this moment where we haven't even been able to touch each other because of social distances. We need this boldness when they tell us we can't have this or we can't have that or that we are our circumstance. All you are is a bleeder because you've been bleeding for 12 years, sis. (laughs) You're gonna get in some moments in which you don't just need to be bold But there's some moments where you're going to have to talk to yourself because they've been talking about you and to you. Verse 21 said, for she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. And maybe you are not like me. Maybe you don't ever have to talk to yourself because if I let what they said and what he said and what she said and I never got with myself and talked to myself, I would not get what I needed. You're going to have some moments where Touch is not going to just be physical, but spiritually significant. You're going to have to exercise an act of faith to say, I'm going to get what I need. Some of us need to touch the job they said we should never apply for. (laughs) Some of us need to touch that dormant dream. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. The second miracle that we see is the miracle of attention and attentiveness. Somebody, anybody, sing a black girl song. Bring her out to know herself, to know you. That's a cry for attention and attentiveness to the needs of black girls and black women. You see, Jesus is attentive because Jesus is a savior who stops. Jesus is teaching. He's in the middle of teaching. And he stops not only that teaching to see what Jairus wants, but later in the text, he stops to deal with the woman of, with the issue of blood on the way to the girl. What does the miracle of attention and attentiveness mean for colored girls who need a miracle? It means two things. The first, Jesus is attentive to us. He sees us. He notices us. And you can see this by the way he addresses the woman in verse 22. He calls her daughter. That's a term of 
affection, right? Daughter, everybody is not, it can't be called, every leader especially wouldn't have addressed this woman who's been bleeding and outcast as daughter, but Jesus does. And then the girl, how he addresses the girl, which is over in Mark 5, we actually see how Jesus um, addresses the girl, same account. Mark 5, 41 said, he took her by the hand and said to her, Talithia Kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. So that's the first thing. Jesus is attentive to us. He addresses us, and he sees us. The, the, the second part that we need to get about the attention and attentiveness and the miracle that's in that is that we need to be attentive to Jesus when he arrives. We need to be attentive to his person, his work. You know, I have a friend that I went to, to college with, and he's the most quiet in our friend group. But when he walks in the room, no matter what's been going on, we'd be running from class or people be stressed out about finals. But there was something about when he walked in the room, the whole atmosphere will change. So this is, this, this is what I know to be the person of Jesus. We need to be aware of the way that atmospheres change. And they move towards restoration and resurrection just by the very presence of Jesus. That brings me to the last miracle. The miracle of restoration and resurrection. You see, the woman in this text is, she's not dead yet, so she's restored. But the girl is dead. She's resurrected. And the miracle of restoration and resurrection, they're intertwined but different. Verse 22 said, instantly the woman was made well when Jesus showed up, when she touches him. Verse 25 says, but when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And see, the thing that I need you to get about the miracle of restoration and resurrection is not so much the miracle itself. It's that you got to understand, sometimes Jesus will restore you privately to resurrect you publicly. I'm going to say that again for you. Jesus sometimes will restore you privately to resurrect you publicly. You got to understand that the woman with the issue of blood, didn't nobody think she had the audacity to walk up and touch Jesus. Jesus didn't even know who had touched him. Jesus will restore you in private to resurrect you publicly. And how do I know this? Because of the way it ends. It says in the report of this spread throughout the district. But you got to understand, though, about the miracle of private restoration and public resurrection. What does that mean for colored girls? What does it mean? It means that you can't miss the miracle, focus on the crowd. Don't miss what God is doing for you privately because of what's going on, the chaos, the noise publicly. The work will speak for itself. And the report of this spread throughout the district. When Jesus showed up to the girl's house, it says the crowd mocked him. Jesus said, go away. He sent the crowd off privately. <laughs> For the girl is not dead but sleeping, and they laughed at him. <laughs> Don't miss the miracle. Focus on the crowd. You see, this text, as I come to a close, is a resounding get up for every color girl that needs a miracle. And that's good news. It's good news for every black woman and girl who needs to get up from the veil of sexism, get up from classism, and get up from racism. For every black mama who's trying to get up from the hospital bed giving birth. This is good news that there's a miracle for the colored girls, for LGBTQ people who are trying to survive their communities and their homes and their works places past Pride Month, right, where everybody's got to sign up. This is good news for folks trying to get up from poverty and good news for folks trying to get up from capitalism and low wages. I hear a get up in my spirit for black people who need to get up from the mindset of working yourself to death. For black people who need to get up and rest. For those of us that need to get up from the stain of self-hatred and shame. The good news of Jesus for colored girls and all of us is that we get the invitation to our miracle to get up. We get the invitation to show up in faith, the invitation to the miracle of attention and attentiveness. We get an invitation to the miracle of restoration and resurrection. We get the invitation to get up. You know, in Colored Girls, there's a beautiful scene 
It's actually called a laying on of the hands. And the ladies come together to affirm each other. And they come together to find God in each other and themselves and to think about the strength and empowerment. And all these women at this point have all considered suicide. But they've eventually, by this time, moved on to their own, what they call their own rainbows, right? And so my prayer for you as you hear this word is that you would get a get up in your spirit. That you would even now, that the spirit of God and that the people in your community, whoever that is, would have your own laying on of hands. Because the good news for colored girls who need a miracle is that we've got the power to get up. We've got the power to get up, y'all. We have the power to get up. We have the power to get up. I need somebody in the comments right now just to say, I have the power to get up. Through Christ, we can do all things. Through Christ, we can do anything. So go ahead and type that you have the power to get up. You have the power to get up. And this is our virtual laying of hands. We are going to come together. We're going to join in with you. We are going to trust God with you. We are going to pray with you and pray over you because you have to Christ to get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. We bless your name. What an amazing word from our ministerial fellow, Brittany Pascal. What a powerful and anointed word from God. We bless you, oh God, and we thank you for it. We are sure that that word has blessed you. And if you feel so inclined, if you are tired of allowing the crowd and the noise to get in the way of the miracle that God has ordained for you, if you are ready to get up, if you are ready to move forward, if you are ready to hearken unto the voice of God and say, let's do it, God. Let's go, Jesus. This is your time. This is your time. We are joining with you. On the bottom of your screen right now, you are going to see a phone number. And that's the number to our church office, 917-426-1860. And our team is standing by to respond to you, to your decision, to take hold of your miracle, to be bold enough to say, I don't care what it looks like, I need the Lord my God. And what we want for you to do is, if you are committing your life to God for the first time, or if you're recommitting your life to Jesus today, text S to that number for salvation. If you want to join DLE, we would love nothing more than to have you. And I can promise you, this is good ground. We have amazing pastors. We have an amazing community and family who really means what we say. We want to love on you. So if you want to join DLE, go ahead and text J for join. If you need prayer, if you need a laying on of hands, like Brittany told us today in her sermon, a virtual laying on of hands can come to you right now. So go ahead and, and text P for prayer. And lastly, if you have any questions, go ahead and text Q for questions. And our team will reach out to you to connect and to help you as you make your decision to get up. Hallelujah. And so... If you don't find yourself texting this number right now, what I'm going to call you to do is to pray along with me as we pray for every single person who texts something. And for the people that are wrestling with whether or not they want to text, they, they feel that tug, they, they feel that pull, they, they know that it's time to get up, they want the miracle, they no longer want to be distracted by the noise, but they need a little support. Go on ahead and lay hands in the Spirit in the virtual congregation with me as we go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we worship and we bless you for what you did here today for the amazing anointing, for the wonderful word that you preach through your servant, Lord God. We glorify you, and even now, we lift up every single person, Lord, who has decided to make the decision to get up, Lord, 
to those who are saying it for the first time or recommitting their lives unto you, Lord Jesus, we lift them up, Lord God, and we say, Heavenly Father, do your thing. For those who are wrestling or want to join this community and really take on the reality of doing life in the body of Christ, we ask, oh God, that you would anoint them and give them the boldness to do so. For those who find themselves seeking prayer, seeking prayer, seeking intercession, they need help, they need support, they need something, they need the miracle and they're not sure how to go about it. Lord God, we lift them up before you and we ask, oh God, that it will be done in your holy and precious name. And for anybody who has questions, for anybody who's wrestling with the faith, for anybody who's still trying to reconcile why did 2020 happen when we know we serve a good God, for all those people, we are lifting them up before you, asking that you, the big God who could answer anything and do all things, go ahead and do just that. In the name of Jesus, we pray in faith on one accord and we have all gathered. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. What an amazing service. It was DLE Fellow Sunday. And I know that you were blessed. And so we praise God for that. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We speak this over you, both now and always, in the name of Jesus. Go in peace, people of God. Have an amazing week, and thank you for joining TLE. We love you.